Welcome to Audit and Assurance, or AA, for the international version. Now, the key to pass the AA is to cover the whole syllabus and make sure that you know the exact content within each ISA so that you can better tackle this Section A multiple choice questions. And as you can see, from the exam's point of view, the exam has been divided into Section A as well as the Section B questions. Total 100 marks, 50 will be the passing mark, 3 hours, so in other words, you are only given 180 minutes. For the Section A, there will be 3 cases, each with 5 multiple choice questions. So there will be 2 marks per question and this means that total 30 marks. I would say Section A is quite tough because if you're not familiar with the ISA, which is the St International Standards on Auditing, it's quite a wordy paper actually, um, and if you're not sure about the ACCA Code of Ethics, it's highly unlikely that you will get the questions right in the Section A. And make sure that you dip into further in each of the standard and to uh, practice enough multiple choice questions so that you can pass the Section A. Um, according to my experience, for that 30 marks, you need to aim at, to score 20 out of 30. If that's the case then, you can't get the Section B wrong, okay, if you can score 20 out of 30 in Section A, according to my experience there. And for the Section B though, there will be three worthy questions. You are given the narratives and several requirements and for each sentence that you've been put in the answer box, that will be worth at one mark. So theoretically, 70 marks in total, you are expected to write 70 sentences. Um, however, from the exam techniques point of view, we will detail that later on. Uh, there might be different from cases to cases. And three questions would be 30 marks for the first one, 20 and 20 marks for the second and the final one. As we can say, in the section B questions, the examiner has his own preference of setting the following exam questions. For example, you are required to comment on the control deficiencies of a client's company. So for example, the client's company we found out when we audit uh, its entity that we found out there's been fraudulent transaction happening inside the client's entity. And then we'll need to make a recommendation. So for example, we're going to remove that staff. Alternatively, uh, we're going to be uh, adding extra staff, okay, advising the client's company to add an extra staff in making sure that the fraudulent activity will be stopped. And then from the auditor's point of view, we will need to design the test of controls. Okay, so for example, we found out that the employee within a client's company has left. However, that client's company is still paying wages to that employee. And then we advise that the associated personnel needs to be checked very carefully with associated transactions paid and therefore we will design a test of control procedure. For example, we will be inputting the, uh, the employee's name again onto the system and then to see whether or not further transactions or further payment has been made by the company to that particular staff. Okay, so uh, we will be using the column approach in our exam though. Another question, type of question will be related to the corporate governance and this will be relatively straightforward indeed because when we are studying the corporate governance, for example, the UK Corporate Governance Code, yes, we've got several sections in there, and you will be given a case, and then my approach will be to copy nearly every sentence from that case into your answer box, and then you're going to make a comment of that, whether or not this is right, this is wrong, and what should be done, okay? So as a corporate governance uh, question appraisal. You'll also be t uh, tested 
about the audit risks or the risks of material misstatement. So any other any sort of chances that accounts financial statements may go wrong, and uh, we will be using our Taylor approach to tackle these type of questions. And finally, the completion stage as well as the reporting stage, and this will be very tough indeed. But trust me, there will be a lots of easy marks that you can get when you are reviewing the final audit work. So, for example, performing the final analytical procedures by comparing things, by calculating ratios, by assessing the going concern status, obtaining the written representation from management, and issuing your audit report. And we will see the exact steps that we will be using in our actual course there. As an introduction to the AA syllabus, as we can say, we need to firstly know the audit framework. And of course, particularly, we are studying the international standards on auditing, which is the ISA in this particular exam. There will be certain regulations there, particularly for the public interest entities, or we can call it as the PIPES. So for example, uh, the uh, public listed companies will be an example of the public interest entities. And what we need to do then is to think about, okay, it's the Companies Act, the international standard, for example, on auditing, in regulating our activities later on. And then we need to plan the audit. It's very important that you focus on the planning stage by assessing the risks of the client's company. So from there, we will be devoting the concept called business risks related to a client. And from that business risks, we can then come up with our audit risk. What may go wrong when we check the client's financial statements later on. But when we are assessing the risks of a client's company, it's important that we go through the client's internal control systems very carefully and to make sure that we understand whether or not we can rely on its internal control system. If the answer for that is no, we will need to collect more audit evidence related to numbers. So related to numbers, the audit evidence related to numbers is what I mean by substantive tests. And of course, we will decide all these bits and pieces during the planning stage of our audit and then subsequently we'll check them when we check the client's company's account. And finally, we will review what we have done, okay? So things that I've said before, we may have found out lots of misstatement or we can call it as errors and fraud uh, made by the client's company and we require the management to correct them, okay? If this is not the case, this will certainly have an implication or impact on our audit report. And I'll tell you exactly what sort of things that we need to consider before we issue the final audit report because if you follow my approach here, you will get at least another three marks in your exam. So for example, we will need to uh, tell the management, tell those charged with governance, with reasons, okay, or potentially we can consider to recite as the auditor before we dip into the implications of our audit report. I must say that the audit and assurance uh, exam here is quite a challenging paper, but it's quite a worthy paper, and um, it really scares many students. However, this paper is quite interesting enough because it brings all the bits and pieces all together uh, from accounting to auditing. And that's why we will use quite a lot of exam technique to tackle this particular paper. Okay? We, we will be using quite a lot of mnemonics as well to help you to learn each standard detailed content. So trust me, I can help you pass. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording now and I look forward to seeing you in my course and happy studying. Best of luck. APC, accounting for your future.